to relegate or not to relegate? That is the question. Hi guys, this is a subject I've wanted to make a video on for quite a while actually, looking at the pros and cons of relegation and you know, which is the best option. We've got some um, unions going for ring fencing, no relegation, like your, um, for example, you're in Ireland or in Wales or in New Zealand, um, and then some nations like England and France who still have your kind of old school, if you like, uh, promotion relegation situation. So let's actually have a look at for relegation, pro relegation to start with, and see where the arguments are. Now, of course, and it was easier to come up with arguments against relegation, actually, I think, but it depends on the weighting you give to each argument. So I really like to, you know, know what you guys think. I do have a particular opinion on it, which I will give um, towards the end. But for relegation, I think it's definitely more exciting for fans. I think that's for sure. Every game is important, every point is vital, every losing bonus point, every try bonus point, you know, it's absolutely vital. So you're fighting the whole time and if you're a fan of that team, you can really get stuck into the season. Every game's exciting, you know, and even if you're in the bottom of the table, there's absolutely still something to fight for. So I think that's a massive, massive plus for the fan. So for the fan, I think there's a real strong argument that relegation is definitely better. Um, so yeah, and, and the teams at the bottom, they're having to fight so the attendances stay high, you know, there's still interest. So you think about revenues for clubs as well. There's more exciting games. You'll have maybe more consistent attendances because you know you need your big players on the pitch for you know for more games so more people will want to come and watch so i think for a revenue from a club point of view again promotion relegation could be a great idea unless you go down if you go down it's a terrible idea and you could of course uh, lose it all i mean uh, london welsh um, they got promoted unexpectedly maybe they shouldn't have gone up but they went up and they spent all their money and they went bankrupt and they had nothing to fall back on and, and they've gone essentially which you know is a disaster so in some respects it's a great idea financially in some respects it's a terrible idea um, another point for relegation is it's a meritocracy and I think you know in society we like a meritocracy where you know, the best win and if you're not good enough you know you go down if you are good enough from the league below you go up so you know it's always rewarding you know the best performance which is kind of how we think sport should be kind of ethically if you like or well, certainly you know, I do um, and there is something you know good nice pure if you like about the idea that anybody in the pyramid has a chance to make the top table um, you know even if you're kind of a quite a low ranked team if you put the if you put the um, systems in place and probably a lot of finance to be honest you could want you know dream of going up and being a premiership team I mean a good example of it is Exeter they spent a long time banging on the door in the championship trying to go up trying to go up actually doing it financially quite responsibly and now they're up they're staying up and they're at the top of the tree or near the top of the tree so you know all those arguments are very strong for relegation Okay, so evidence against relegation, for ring fencing and making sure you know, teams don't go down, there is security and safety in that top league. And I think the strongest argument is that you know, pretty much all interviews I hear with top coaches is that if there's no relegation, it's much better for skill development. You get more skillful players because you can afford to dedicate the time towards that. You can afford to play a more skill-based side, um, sorry, a skill-based system. Um, a way of playing that could go wrong because you know there's not a disaster at the end of the road if it does go wrong you can get it wrong for a year or two but you know hopefully when it gets right and it clicks at a higher level so you know coaches like this because they know they can play more exciting rugby and you could argue that is better for the fans you know, they see more exciting rugby but actually what's happened fan wise is because so many games don't have anything riding on them, you know, they don't see the best players all the time. They know they can miss that match because it doesn't mean anything. So actually, you know, for the big games, it's great. But for the rest of the games, it's not so great. So, uh, you know, whatever you think is the most important there. Um, a really positive for the clubs and the players is they can give players rest. 
the top players get more rest when there is no relegation. Simple as, you can, you can actually afford to rest your top players and play the squad players and the young players, because if it goes wrong, it doesn't matter as much. And then conversely, if you're resting players, the chance of injury does go down. Of course, you could get injured at any point, but certainly the odds go down, and that's really, really good for the club in the big games, and it's really good for national teams. You know, ring fencing against relegation is great for national teams. You can kind of guarantee or you know, ensure your players are less likely to pick up injuries, be fresher, which is really important, more rested for when they go into international camp. So, you know, another couple more points to finish on. Teams where there is relegation can get into the mindset of playing not to lose. If we play not to lose, we pick up bonus points or we pick up tight wins, we do enough not to get relegated. Which isn't great for skill development, it's not the biggest spectacle for TV, you know, and you know, you're more likely to buy in ready-made players, maybe you know, big foreign players from, say, South Africa or something, you know could do a job, um, you can play quite negative, you can play quite tight, playing not to lose, and just trying to survive in your league. And it's not great for skill development, like I said, and then conversely, it's not great for the national team. Okay, so I think they, those are the arguments that I see them. If I've missed any big arguments, please put them in the comments below. You know, my opinion is, you know, I like both systems. I see the merits of both systems. I would have a halfway house where you have no relegation, uh, maybe for two years, and then on the third year, maybe there's some sort of calculation that comes in, and there's a playoff between the bottom team or the consistently the worst team and the best team in the league below, and you have like a home and away playoff and see if they actually deserve to go up. And in that way, you could have a couple of years where you're developing young players, you're developing game styles, skills, but you still get a little bit of, you know, um, element of risk of going down. I don't know if there is a right answer. If you feel strongly, either way, please let me know and why. I just think it's a really interesting topic, one that's not going to go away. Anyway, guys, until the next video, I will see you then.